Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 50. The title of the discourse is The Rebuke of Mara. So, the basic overview of this discourse is basically that uh, of Venerable Mahamogluna, uh, who Mara entered in his belly and he realized that it is Mara and he recognized Mara and he then told Mara about one of his past lives where he was one of the wicked persons and then what happened and then because he knew Mara, Mara had no option but to come out and could dis would disappear, right? So this is basically a very interesting kind of a discourse about uh, Mahamogluna's, Venerable Mahamogluna's glory of what he was and his recounting of his past life about Mara, how Mara plays with us, our minds, Right? So let us discuss. I am just covering the main main points. It's a long discourse, so I am just summarizing it. The link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can read it. So it is like said that one time Venerable Mahamoglana was staying in the land of the Bhagas at the Crocodile Hill, and Mahamoglana was walking mindfully in the open air. Now, what at that time Mara the wicked got inside Moglana's belly, and Moglana thought, "Why is my belly so feeling so heavy?" Like I have just eaten a load of beans. Then he stepped down from the walking path, sat on a seat and investigated himself. Now his power of investigation was very strong. When he investigated himself, he found, he saw that the Mara the wicked has got inside the belly. So he said to Mara, come out wicked one, come out. Do not harass the realized one or his disciple. Don't create lasting harm and suffering for yourself. Then Mara thought, this ascetic doesn't really know me. Or see me when he tells me to come out. Not even the teacher could recognize me so quickly. So how could a disciple? So Mara was thinking like this. And then Moglana said to Mara, I know that even what you are thinking. Don't you think that I cannot see you or I cannot recognize you? I can completely recognize you. So then Mara thought, this ascetic really re knows me and sees me. Then Mara came up out of the Moglana's mouth and stood against the door bar. Moglana saw him there and said, I see you even there, wicked one. Do not think I he, he doesn't see me. That you that's you, wicked one, standing near the door bar. Then then uh, 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 Mahamalana told him, the wicked one, that in one life he himself was a Mara named Dusi, and I had a sister named Kali. You were her son, which made you my nephew. At that time, Kukusandha, the blessed one, the perfected one. The fully awakened Buddha arose in the world. Kukusandha had a five. Kakusandha had a, had a fine pair of chief disciples named Vidura and Sanjeeva. Now, so it's basically. Now, then he told that Venerable Sanjeeva, one of the disciples of Kakusandha, went into the uh, wilderness and meditated. And there were farmers who crossed by. And they thought that uh, this uh, mendicant has died while meditating. So they cremated, they thought that why not, you know, cremate him. So, so they lit the fire and cremated, but next day they found him again. So they said, they were amazed that how he has come to life. Now, when Maradusi saw that, he said, oh, I don't know the course of rebirth of these ethical mendicants of good character. Why don't I take possession of these Brahmins and householders? And through them, I, I say that come all of you up. Uh, Come, all of you, abuse, attack, harass and trouble the ethical mendicants of good character. Hopefully by doing this, we can upset their minds so that Maradusi can find a world. So basically what Maradusi wanted is that he wanted to possess the Brahmins and householders so that they can attack those mendicants, upset them, right, so that Mara could find a vulnerability. Because if someone is ethical, Mara doesn't like them. Because then those people have, will be, in some time, they will be out of the uh, 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 range of Mara. If the person is comes in Buddha's teaching, follows the teachings, lives a noble life in accordance with the Eightfold Path, he will over time be free from the clutches of Mara. And Mara doesn't want that. So he wants the, their minds to upset. So friends, very very important if you, are if you are listening to me right now. When we are on this path, there will be lot of events where our minds will be upset it through various ways. Right? For example, when I started this channel at that time, I received a lot of hate comments. 
right, about the Buddha and all these things. They were basically meant to stop my work, but I did not stop. Actually, it even encouraged me further. If there is a hate comment, I even made two, three more videos that particular day. Because we don't have to uh, fall for these things. There will be many ways where if we walk on the path of the Buddha, they, people will try to, you know, kind of uh, distract our distract ourselves. Right? And because Buddha's knowledge was like another level. And if Buddha's knowledge was actually uh, practiced, a lot of people who are making a business in the name of dharma and everything, they would finish it. And they did not like, that's why they do not like the Buddha. They do not like the Buddha's teaching. Right? They do not like the fact that Buddha said that every person is equal. Right? And they always cast aspersions on the Buddha and anyone who shares the knowledge of the Buddha. Similar way, so Mara, what they were, he, he tried to do, he said that let me possess the Brahmins and let they add the, uh, let they say bad words to the mendicants and they will, mendicants will feel upset, their sadhana will be destroyed and uh, you know, so then they started, so the Brahmins and householders, they abuse, attack uh, the, the mendicants, calling them wrong things and everything and those people who abused, attack, when they died, they got reborn in a place of loss, in the place of hell. Why? Because, see, Mara cannot control totally the actions of those people. Mara can only urge them. But finally, they take responsibility of, of their actions. So it's very, very important. that Ultimately, we are responsible for actions. So those Brahmins who attacked the mendicants, they went to hell. Then, Kakusanda, the blessed one, the Buddha at that time, he said that mendicants, the Brahmins and householders have been possessed by Mara, Mara Dusi. So he told them to abuse you in the hope of upsetting your minds so that he can find a vulnerability. Come all of you mendicants, meditate spreading a heart full of love to all directions. So this was like the antidote to hatred. So for example, if so, this is basically the antidote to anger. So if someone like uh, kind of abuses you, what will happen in you? Anger will arise in you. And if anger is arising in you, the antidote to this is practicing and spreading love. Loving kindness meditation. I also have a loving kindness meditation on this channel. You can search for it and practice. So, Kakusandhu said, uh, Kakusandhu said, practice loving kindness meditation. Right? So, they practice the loving kindness meditation. Then Mara, Mara Dusi thought, oh, this is wrong. You know, this is going in the wrong direction. They have kind, kind of, they have cut my, you know, uh, uh, the uh, my uh, attack uh, they cut the attack so what they said Mara Dusi said okay now let me do like this I'll uh, I'll possess the Brahmins and householders and they will praise they will honor and rever too much honor and rever the uh, mendicants so what they will do they will get into this pride mode they will get into this pride and they will you know maybe leave their sadhana or you know they will get into this pride. So they, they started doing that. So then Kakusanda, Kakusanda, the blessed one, realized that. He said, mendicants, the Brahmins and Haldos, householders, have been possessed by Mara Dusi. He told them to venerate you in the hope of upsetting your minds so that he can find your vulnerability. Come, all you mendicants, meditate observing the ugliness of body, perceiving the repulsiveness of food, perceiving dissatisfaction with the whole world and observing the impermanence of all conditions. Right? Now, when pride comes in us, so when anger comes, so the, what's the lesson for us as a lay people? When anger comes in us, what we should do? Do loving kindness, more of loving kindness meditation. When pride and all these things come in us, you know, lot of pride, and you know, then do the impermanence meditation, right? There, I don't have an, an impermanence meditation right now on the channel. I will make one uh, uh, meditation uh, on impermanence or you can find it on the YouTube. Do Meditation on the impermanence of everything, right? That will be an antidote to this false illusion of stability and pride that comes, arrogance and all these things. So, so they did that and, uh, right? So, again, Mara's attack went uh, 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 useless. Now, Mara Dusi, what he did? Final recourse, he could not think of anything else. So, he took possession of a certain boy, picked up the rock, so... He, and hit the Vidura on the head, cracking it open. Right? Vidura was one of the disciples of, of Kakusanta. Then Vidura, with blood pouring from his cracked skull, 
still followed behind the buddha kaku sandha then the big buddha kaku sandha turned to gaze back the way an elephant does saying this maradusi knows no bounds and with that look maradusi fell from that place and was bo- reborn in the great hell any abuse any attack to a fully realized one right it's one of the grounds to go in hell directly in the hell and this is one of the weighty karmas that weighs over all the other good karmas that you have done you so you do in, the, in your entire life lo- lot of good karmas but you abuse attack the buddha and that karma overrides it and takes one down to hell that's why that's why friends another very important learning from this never ever abuse attack denigrate any fully realized being any buddha i i came across you know when i was making the videos i came across these things when people said that buddha is a false god and they talk they wrote these kind of comments please don't do that please don't do that for the sake of your own well being buddha was a fully realized one right even if you don't believe then don't still i will request you not to do that because the more a person's uh, uh, the the consciousness level if you criticize blame the more karma you attract right and that's why it said do not say any negative things about saints sages right do not denigrate them better not to say anything right so mara dusi fell into great hell now the great hell uh, so he then gave the description about the great hell and for i roasted for many many centuries many millennia in that great hell for 10000 years i roasted in the annex of that great hell experiencing the pain called this is emergence my body was in a human form but then i had the head of the fish then there was this certain you know kind of poetic kind of phrases where mahamoglana was showing his might and he was saying what kind of hell was that when dusi was roasted after attacking the disciple vidura along with the brahmin kakusanda there were 100 iron spikes each one individually painful that's the kind of hell where dusi was roasted after attacking the disciple vidura along with the brahmin kakusanda dark one if you attack a mendicant who directly knows this if you attack a mendicant who directly knows this a disciple of the buddha you will fall into suffering so he was this basically saying that if you do these things to a mendicant of a disciple of buddha you will get that uh, uh, kind of a retribution so then he is like saying certain phrases of his own uh, victories like he says i am the one who urged by the buddha shook the stilt long house of migra's mother with his big toe as the sangha of the mendicants watched i am the one who shook the palace of victory with his big toe so there is one another discourse where only by the power of his big toe mahamoglana shook the entire palace of victory in the gods realm owing to psychic power inspiring inspiring deities to o o dark one if you attack a mendicant who directly knows this a disciple of the buddha you will fall into suffering this is basically the gist of this discourse about the rebuke Uh, that venerable mahamoglana gave to mara that uh, and finally this is how in the basic basic circular grove the mendicant rebuked mara that spirit downcast disappeared right there right see it's important when we know that this is our mistake this is our dark side and we start looking at our dark side through our practice of vipassana meditation and our mi- mindfulness practice the more we are free one by one you know we are free from the bounds of the mara slowly but surely we will be free from the bounds of the mara so the teaching of the noble eightfold path you have to just follow that and to be free right so i hope this this kind of a sharing from me in this video kind of gave you some insights some uh, helpful insights do share your insights in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya